Good morning and welcome to the Angry Astronaut. So, can things continue to develop with Starship? And, as usual, we don't know what the hell is going on. There are so many conflicting reports right now. This is unlike any other launch in history. And this is very strange given the fact that we are talking about an historic event, the launch of the most powerful rocket in human history. I mean, why do we get so little information Information about this. Wouldn't SpaceX want to make this event a big deal? Wouldn't they want to publicize it? Wouldn't they want people to come out in droves to see it? Well, apparently not. Currently, the FAA launch license still has not been issued, and in addition to that, SpaceX doesn't seem to have any sort of plans of making any sort of official event out of this. Instead, they're keeping everything very much under wraps. All of the FAA information indicates that Starship will be launching on the 10th or the 11th or 12th, maybe the 13th, something like that. However, there are no indications from the local authorities, that is to say, the people who close the road, that this is going to be happening. Instead, those authorities are saying that these are non-flight tests going on from the 10th through the 13th. So what's the truth and why all the secrecy? Well, there is one possibility, and this is something that a number of people have been talking about lately. There are some very powerful and very potent opponents to Starship. Starship has some powerful enemies in the region, and they are mostly comprised of environmentalists. People who are concerned about the protected status of the region, of the endangered species who live in the area, and they've never wanted Starship to take off. And it's very possible that the moment that the FAA license is issued, the moment that we have anything official, the Sierra Club and others may issue some sort of challenge in court. And the strategy of keeping this whole thing under wraps until the last possible moment might be a way of sabotaging their efforts. How is this the case? We're going to find out in just a moment. Oh, and real quick, please subscribe. I know I've passed that 100,000 subscriber milestone, but this state of growth has been fantastic. Thank you so much for all of this. By the way, I have the final episodes of my 100K celebration coming up this weekend. I hope you guys have enjoyed all of these episodes. And also, please consider supporting my content. I am, of course, traveling to Boca Chica and Colorado Springs this month in order to cover a lot of stuff. Thanks so much for making all of this possible and any support would very much be appreciated especially if I have to stay in Boca longer. Let's get on to what's happening with Starship. Oh, and by the way, one of my viewers up in the Northeast, the fellow that's making all of my travel possible, he mentioned that even though I've been wrong about a lot of things with this, I was actually right in predicting when the static fire was going to take place with Starship, so at least I'm right about a couple of things, but in any event, none of that really matters right now. What matters is the fact that we are days away, or at most a couple of weeks away from the first launch of Starship. Assuming nothing goes wrong, assuming nobody stands in the way of this process. Once again, keep in mind, the launch license has still not been issued. There was every reason to believe that the launch license is going to be issued on schedule, given what SpaceX is doing right now, but there are complications that could really present a problem, not least of which are the environmental organizations in this region who have launched one legal challenge after another to Starship and are likely poised to give this one last shot the moment the FAA releases the launch license. Why would they wait for that kind of timing? Well, because the FAA required a large number of environmental initiatives to be undertaken by SpaceX before they would give them clearance to launch. Now, not all of those initiatives need to be completed prior to a launch, but some of them even require that a local biologist or somebody 
somebody along those lines approve the launch before it even takes place, that they consult with somebody who's an expert in the environmental concerns of this region with the endangered species, the timing of the launch, that sort of thing, before they can even approve said launch. Now, if all of these things haven't been done when the FAA issues the launch license, it's very possible that the Sierra Club and others could argue that SpaceX has not yet lived up to their obligations. Let me give you an example of some of the requirements here. Quote, SpaceX will continue contracting a qualified biologist to conduct pre-, during-, and post-construction biological monitoring for vegetation and birds. This monitoring is ongoing and will continue to be conducted within three miles of construction areas. Monitoring reports will continue to be sent to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service annually. SpaceX will initiate coordination with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service within 60 days of the start of construction under the proposed action to identify practicable opportunities to protect, restore, and or enhance habitat for the ocelot, jaguarundi, piping plover, and or red knot, which are all endangered species in the area, by the way. SpaceX intends to continue coordination with the USFWS to complete one or more habitat protection, restoration, or enhancement projects to benefit the cats and birds and contribute to the conservation of these species. SpaceX will continue contracting a qualified biologist to conduct pre- and post-launch biological monitoring for vegetation and birds. Monitoring will be conducted within one mile of the VLA up to a week before a Starship or Super Heavy launch and the day after a launch. Monitoring reports will be sent to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service within two weeks following completion and analysis of the data. So if a launch were to take place on April 10th, for example, it would mean that whoever this biologist is would have had to have already conducted their monitoring and would be in the process of compiling their report to send to the USFWS. Is that happening right now? Well, if it was, I would say there's a good chance that the Sierra Club would know about it. And if it hasn't happened, that alone could be a reason for the Sierra Club to file an injunction. Or if any of the rest of this stuff hasn't been done, Done yet. The FAA may not be all that concerned about getting all of this stuff implemented prior to the first launch, but the Sierra Club could argue that it has to be completed before SpaceX can launch anything from Boca Chica, especially a full stack and a judge might very well agree with this. So how does SpaceX deal with this problem? By waiting until the last possible moment to receive the FAA launch license. For example, on Friday at 5.15 p.m., when the Sierra Club can't find a judge to issue an injunction against the launch and then press the button first thing Monday morning. Now, all of this may sound a bit outrageous, but what I find to be especially outrageous is the fact that a launch license still has not been issued, and we're talking about a launch only four or five days away right now. That is almost unprecedented. Yes, with previous launches going up to 10,000 meters or whatever, SpaceX didn't give a whole lot of notice, but this is something else entirely. This is a full stack flying out over the Gulf of Mexico and interdicting lots of high altitude air traffic. That's something that you want to provide at least some notice about. Now, this region isn't an incredibly active air corridor, but nevertheless, usually the FAA wants to give a lot of advance notice about these things. Why wouldn't they do it? Well, I think this is very possibly one of the reasons, but there is another possible reason. It could be that SpaceX and the FAA don't want massive crowds to be flooding into Brownsville, South Padre Island, and other areas just prior to the launch of the most powerful rocket in human history. Not only is this really going to complicate matters of security, I mean, SpaceX has had problems with people jumping the fences in the past already, and this is going to be a much larger crowd than they've ever had to deal with in the past. 
they're also going to have to worry about possible collateral damage to spectators. As I've mentioned many times before, if there's a pad RUD or even worse, a pad airburst, that is to say, Starship manages to get a couple hundred meters off the pad and then explodes, it's very possible that a huge crowd only eight kilometers away would be exposed to a pretty nasty shockwave and possibly even debris as well. I've been accused a number of times of sensationalizing this, but if the explosion is the same or even maybe a little worse than the N1 rocket explosion in the early 1970s in the Soviet Union, you could be looking at damage to buildings as far as 50 kilometers away. Even the Beirut explosion, which was only a little over a kiloton in terms of explosive force, caused damage to houses as far as 10 kilometers from the explosion. And by the way, South Padre Island and Port Isabel are only 8 kilometers away from the launch pad. And of course, Starbase and the village of Boca Chica are even closer than that. You don't want a massive crowd around a potential explosion like this. Now, I don't think think it's very likely that something like this could happen, but never say never, especially with untried equipment, and SpaceX probably wants to take as few chances as possible. But regardless of their motivations, SpaceX is behaving very, very strangely, and frankly, so is the FAA. If this is something that is indeed supposed to happen next week, or even the week after that, that's something that we should get at least some advance notice about. It is a huge event event, a monumental event in the history of spaceflight, and yet both SpaceX and the FAA are keeping very tight-lipped about it. There may be other reasons besides the ones that I have put forward in this video, but if there are, I'm mystified as to what they might be. SpaceX has an important relationship to maintain with this community, with the towns of Port Isabel, Brownsville, South Padre Island. This entire region relies very heavily on all the business, on all the income that SpaceX is bringing to this region. If they made a big event out of the first launch of Starship, it would bring a tremendous amount of business and a huge influx of cash into this region. And yet, SpaceX isn't doing this. That is doubtlessly going to ruffle some feathers with local politicians and business owners, but then again, that can't begin to compare with the problems that might arise if SpaceX does experience a significant anomaly on the pad and a lot of people got injured or killed or at least scared as hell. And by the way, I'm going to be one of those observing this launch from a very close distance, hopefully at Rocket Ranch. I'm very grateful to them for their invitation. And no matter how things go, we all have a very exciting couple of weeks ahead of us. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, please hit those notifications notification bells. It's very important to the success of my channel. And if you'd like to see some exclusive content from the Angry Astronaut and interact with the space community unlike any other on the internet, well, feel free to join me on Patreon and become part of my Discord server. So as always, guys, stay angry about space.